Wayne, Wayne, when I got out of the business in 1994, out of the cutting business in 1994, this is what happened. And I've told you the story before, and I want your listeners to hear this. It was, it's like ripping off a friggin' bandit. It's like, it's like going cold turkey when you want to quit smoking. I had, I don't know, I remember how many lawns I had. I remember the guys came to me and they said, Darren, I want, we want $35 an hour all, for all of us instead of 30. Think about that. I was there in 90, in 19, 1994, I was paying guys $30 an hour to run a, to run a crew. Think about that. How stupid that was at that point. Yeah. Imagine what you guys are not making. I mean, what, you, you probably, what are you kidding me, Darren? Anyway. That's what I was doing, and I was making okay money. I wasn't making okay money. I was just getting the, uh, I, w- I was getting the exposure to get other jobs because I thought that that's what I needed. It was like my running billboard to get a paver job or whatever. I remember he came to me and he says, "Darren, we want an extra five dollars an hour." And I said, "Give me your phone." And he goes, "What do you mean?" And I says, "I'm going to call Mrs. Smith and I'm going to call all the customers right here in front of you, and I'm going to quit. I'm not doing it anymore." He goes, "No, you're not. I'm serious. Give me the phone." Mrs. Smith, hey, this is Darren from Kentucky Blue. Just want to let you know we're not cutting your lawn anymore. And right, I get it on speaker, and they're all staring at me. They're all looking at me. Are you, are you kidding? I said, I'm done. No more. I actually told them, I said, take my lawnmower. I would rather you you take my lawnmower as you go. I don't really care. I'm not doing it anymore. You have to rip the Band-Aid off, and you got to stop doing it. you got to get into some specialize in something, be dedicated to that, to whatever it is, or raise your price. If you want to stay in the business, do it, but start charging what you really deserve and stop making excuses for your customers. You know, that that's exactly it. And and we try to justify it. Now, now the spin of that, and I'm sure I'll probably get some hate mail or something on this, you know, <laughs> but okay. the spin we of it is, to, to your point, you know, is we always want to justify why we have to do it because that's what everybody else is doing. And that's a uh-huh. bunch of BS. I mean, yeah. it, it took me nine years to figure out that I didn't care what everybody else was doing in our market, you know, or my competitors. If they wanted to charge $40 or if they wanted to charge $400, I don't care. Once a person actually does, when and you gave a good example yesterday, the numbers weren't exact. They weren't intended to be exact. The thing is, numbers are never exact because everybody's overhead's different, right? That's right. You yep. know, that's right. You know, everybody's overhead's different. So, that goes to what I talked a little bit about early on in my show today, you know, that we can't count on our competition. Well, th- mm-hmm. then it gets into, well, Wayne, I'm, I'm just telling you, nobody's going to pay X number of dollars. You know, uh, they, they'll pay it or you move along to somebody else. I had a good friend of mine. He's dead now. His name was Steve Russ, and he's, he was in sales. He sold two-way radios and, and things like that uh, for 30-plus years. And his, his thing he taught me was – some will, some won't, so what? Right. <laughs> I you know, love it. You know, it was just that simple. You know, some people are going to do it, some people aren't going to do it, but some will do it, you know. And, I'm gonna... you know, it, it's – but the only way you ever change your business and the only way that a, a business owner will change their mindset is to do – what you put out there yesterday on social media was to sit down and say, have you ever really figured out what it cost you? Because, you know, a lot of people say, well, you got direct cost and indirect cost. Okay, that's true. The direct cost is your equipment cost. The indirect cost is the fuel, the maintenance, and the repairs. But don't forget, guys, about your additional overhead. You know those yeah. nice shirts you're wearing? Are those cell phones that you got or the dinner that you buy on a company credit card? That's all, the you know, your administration, your rent on your building or your purchase on your building, that's all additional overhead. And until you sit down and you figure that out, and then you look at that number, right? Then yep. we, we got to add this mean word on the back of direct, indirect, and additional overhead called desired profit. Yeah. You know? What? so. I got to, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. This is, this is going to blow your, your mind. And it, and because on the face of it, you're going to say to me, Oh my God, I can't believe you did this. I turned down a quarter million dollar job the other day, quarter million dollars. How I much was it, it worth is the question. I, the charge was three and a quarter. See, there you go. And, and I said, and, and the guy says, listen, it, we got to take some stuff out. I said, okay, I turned, I took, I, I, I took some stuff out. I did this, I did that. And I still was not even, I wasn't even close. I might've been just over 300 at the time. 
He goes, I'll give you two fifty for it. I said, no, not a chance. Yeah. Not a chance. I'm going to end up working for you. It's going to take me uh, two months to do this job. And then I'm going to lose. I'm going to pay you to do the job. Right. So basically, that's what you got. That's what these guys are doing with the cutting the lawn. They're actually pay, They yeah. don't realize it. They're paying no. the lawn. They're pay, and that's <laughs> exactly right. You know, until you sit down and figure out why you charge what you charge. And, and seriously, it. You know, and we got that specific spreadsheet call that know why you charge what you charge. Because until you figure out that number, you don't know. You're guessing at best. And I'm sure you know what you're making guys you're, do? You know what you could do right now to anybody listening? This is exactly how you do it. Every time you spend money, every time you put your credit card down on something, you put cash, down, try not to use cash. You should always use points. But anyway, anytime you spend money, write it down. Just do it for a solid week. And write it down. Okay, let me, it doesn't matter what it is, yeah. whether it's lunch, dinner, whatever. Just start writing it down. And then, oh, you don't have to do it for longer because you're going to have to. You have to figure in your bills. You know, the, the uh, air conditioning bill that you just, you know, electric bill you just spent on your phone bill. Write it all down. Every time money comes out of your bank account, write it down and find, and then and then start categorizing it. And yep. if you need help, I'm sure Wayne, you'll help them. Absolutely. I mean, this is what you do. You know, let's let's figure this out. What is overhead? If you don't understand what overhead is, you know, it's you not, know, to it's your not point, an umbrella. To your <laughs> point right there, Darren, not to interrupt you, man, but that kicked the memory for me. When we sat down and figured that up for our company, this goes back to 1987, okay? So keep in mind now, we were in business for nine years, okay, eight or nine years before we ever decided it was important to know why we charge what we charge. When we sat down and figured it out, we were a little over $4 an hour off on what we should have been. So we had guessed pretty close. Our competitors got us pretty close. You know, but you know what? When we when we looked at that, Darren, that did two things for us. First of all, at first we said that's only $4 and whatever, 80 cents an hour, okay, or whatever it was change-wise. But then we asked ourselves, how many hours a year of service are we selling at $4.80 too cheap? Now, all of a sudden, that became a hell of a big number when every hour that we were selling was that far off. That number became a big number in a hurry. And what once we figured that out, what that allowed us to do, not only bid jobs better, because that, that's important, right, to get the next one right, but the what I tell guys all the time, the first place you start is your customer base you got. Because what do we know about our existing customers? We know how long they take and how much we get paid. Whether we're spraying right. it, mowing it, whatever we're doing for it, we know what we got involved in the job. And those are the people you address first. And for the Miss Smiths that you have or the ABC companies that you have that are misbid, you address them immediately. You don't ease them into a price increase because it goes back to what you just said a minute ago. You know, you 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 might as well pay the customer to do the work, right? If you got it under exactly. bid, it's like that guy. So I, I kind of jokingly, when I talk about it with contractors, you know, I'll say, you know, you might as well go buy if you're if you're five dollars off, let's say four dollars and eighty cents, you should be charging let's just say thirty five is a number and that's not the right number, but let's just say you should be at thirty five and you're charging thirty, you're better off go buy Miss Smith and give her five dollars and say, Hey, I can't afford to cut your grass today, but here's what I was gonna lose. I'm mowing your neighbor for thirty five, I'm gonna make some money. Exactly. I wanna yeah. I wanna tell you something. This is gonna hit a little bit more home. You know, look, your your uh your employees, your family and your clients are counting on you to do business the right way the right to way. make money. You're, if you're not making, if you're not making money, if you're not making money, you're you're gonna you're eventually gonna fail. And all the people that work for you, they're not oh. gonna be ha- they're not gonna have a job. You know, and your Darren, family's not you're exactly support. right. I always say there's five entities that need to be addressed 